Backgrounds. In modern watercolor, there's a lot of talk about backgrounds. How? When? How? So let's dive into a painting exercise, triptych style, that will become a finished piece of art after all the exercising is done. Okay, I'm using fluid watercolor paper today and I can say this is not my favorite, but you're in luck because this is a very good time to use your not so great paper as the techniques coming up are very forgiving. Now I'm gonna tape down three panels, measure twice, tape once, and we're gonna paint three flowers, pretty much the same way each. And then we're going to paint three different backgrounds. And here we go. Today I'm using my half inch dagger brush and my Art for Joystick palette and picking up that blue, half water, half pigment, curved edge of the brush facing down, press, drag, and start to lift. The lift is pretty abrupt, so you're not gonna get a perfect point. You're going and creating those petals around an imaginary center. I've done this many times before. It is a version of my fairy tale flower. If you wanna learn more about that flower, I'm gonna link it down below. Press, drag, and a more abrupt lift, and just repeat that. I'm going with five petals for a nice balance. Go back in after you've created that first pass of each petal and you can reshape and reform, add a little bit more blue in areas and do whatever you wanna do to zhuzh those petals, but don't overwork it. Going in and dipping back into that blue, the pan of blue is nice and juicy because I've sprayed it down previously. And so I'm getting a nice contrasty blue, lots of pigment on my brush and dabbing around that invisible center, just where the petals meet the invisible center and then letting the color bleed out as it wants to. I'm not really touching that color. And then rinse your brush fully and grab your favorite green. I mixed a little bit of my olive green there in the bottom row on the left with that pink, that soft shell pink, and I'm doing press, drag, and lift. One big petal there. Oh, it's a leaf, but petal, leaf, whatever. They're all done the same way in this one. And I'm adding another one facing up towards the upper right corner, and then another one of a similar size in the bottom left corner, and adding a few more. Now notice there, friends, let's watch that footage again, starting with that first big leaf. I did the press, drag, and lift twice, right next to one another, and filled in and zhuzhed and edited that shape until I was happy. Then I added in another leaf, and that was just one press, drag, and lift, curling up towards that upper right corner. And then when I started adding the leaves in the bottom left corner, I descended in size. And as the leaves got smaller, it became more of a press and lift without any drag. Adding a few blue ovals, very misshapen, quote unquote, sloppy ovals in the upper left corner. One is noticeably larger than the other two. And then dabbing a little bit of that really saturated blue on the bottom of each of those lazy oval circles, whatever you wanna call them. And then rinse your brush and add a little dab of green to represent a few leaves underneath those blue buds. And then a few more leaves as you feel necessary. And I just kinda of wanted those leaves to look like they were coming out from behind that upper left petal, the original larger blue petal in the main flower. If you're having a good time, let me know. If not only having a good time, I want you to be learning something. Do you feel like I've given you a new idea? If you do, go ahead and hit the boop button. That's the like button, friends. I'd appreciate it so much. And while you're there, you know, down below the video, go ahead and let me know if you have any questions at this point. Friends, I try to reply to all comments. It takes me a while, but I do. And so if you have questions, you're a little confused, or you want maybe some advice on a color palette to use other than the blue and the green, let me know, I'm here for you. Now, as I repaint these next two flowers, and that's really what you're gonna do. You've got three panels, and you're going to paint the next two panels as closely to the first as you can. I wanna make a note about composition. So I made some of the decisions that I made very carefully. Let me explain them so you can understand. That biggest blue flower, I definitely on purpose made sure it was off center. So it's more in the top third of the frame of each panel, and that's by design. And then when I added the leaves, I kind of wanted the leaves to look like they weren't just spraying out straight from behind that big blue flower, but I wanted them to kind of look like they were curving and kind of 
very gently, subtly kind of cupping that main blue flower. And that just gives the composition a sort of ease to look at. And then I also made sure that most of the leaves were running off the page at some point. And that kind of gave me some really beautiful leftover negative space or white space. And that's going to become my interesting background in just a few moments. And then of course, adding those little blue buds at the top just really gave me some nice balance in terms of size and scale. I wanted something a lot smaller than the main blue flower and even smaller than the leaves, which were kind of the secondary focal point. And now, like I said, I'm left with really interesting white space, negative space, and I'm gonna fill it all up with some really cool background ideas. Now, because I'm not only thinking about this as an exercise, I am thinking a little bit ahead to what I want the final piece to look like. I'm thinking about all three panels as one finished piece of art at this point. And so I'm going to do three backgrounds and I know that to keep that focal point, I need to have a background in the middle that is darker than the backgrounds on the other two sides. So I'm starting on the left here with my pencil. Friends, this background is just an interesting way. It's some scratchy pencil texture and some smudging. Actually, it's a whole lot of smudging and I love it. So I'm scrubbing in the pencil. This is an HB and then in areas where I want to blend it out and make it lighter, I am just using my finger and smudging. If you're worried about getting the oils from your fingers on there, go ahead and use a blending stump or put a little piece of paper towel over your finger and you'll be just fine. I am lightly sketching in some very, very simple leaf shapes with little stems connecting them, but they're extremely non-realistic. And then a little trick I'm doing to add contrast, but not add a whole lot of darkness, because remember, I want the overall effect of these outer left and right panels to be lighter. I am only adding darkness as I get nearer to that central blue flower. So I'm pressing a little harder the more near I get to that main center blue flower. But I'm not pressing so hard that I'm getting like black shading. I want it to be a soft gray still and then just blending out with my finger or your paper towel or your blending stump and just keep going. Take a few moments every say minute or so as you're developing this background and just look and assess. Don't stay there too long and get right back to it. The key to shading on a textured watercolor paper, because you might be thinking, well, isn't it gonna look really uneven? And well, yes, it is. But I actually really enjoy the texture that I get with a softer pencil on a textured watercolor paper. So just kind of go with it. But to make sure you don't get lines that really feel scratchy or feel like they're an indent on your paper surface, just use a really light touch over and over again in an area. And then really, really start to even go lighter with your touch as you blend out from an area that you want to start dark and end lighter. We've used gradients or value scales on this channel a few times. And you can think back to that exercise if you wanna kind of get a refresher on what it means to shade from light to dark. I'm gonna link a video below as well where I go over a value scale. Most of this background isn't me adding sketched elements. There's a few in there, a little vine here, a little leaf there, a little suggestion of a sketched bud in the upper left-hand corner. But most of this background is about creating a soft, textural, dreamy transition from dark at the center underneath that main blue flower to lighter as we move out towards the edges of the frame. And a fun little tip with this one, friends, you could do this with colored pencils, full-blown color, do what you wanna do. You could do this with watercolor pencils, water-soluble graphite. Anything that's in pencil form is gonna give you that nice texture. If you're feeling like you want some color and you wanna stray away from just the gray of graphite. Moving on to this middle panel, which I mentioned I wanted to be darker. I'm starting by painting in with clean water in that half inch dagger. So I'm just going in with the clean water from my paint pot and filling in those negative or white spaces that are left over. I'm trying with some gumption to keep a little bit of a white margin between the flowers and the leaves and what will eventually be this dark background, but it's not perfect. And friends, I've decided to go bold and use black ink and then a little bit of bleed proof white blended in for some interesting swirly-durly textury stuff. 
Yeah, swirly dirly. I don't know where I come up with this stuff. <laughs> All right, grab your ink and you're just gonna get a little bit of that in the dropper. If yours doesn't have a dropper, just go ahead and use a brush and just drop a few moments onto that wet area. The thing I love about working at this size and this type of background application is that you can work in chunks. You can work in smaller areas so you have more control. Now go ahead, grab your brush. Feel free to kind of boss that ink around a little bit more. At this point though, before I start bossing, I'm gonna add a few dots of the Bleed Proof White with a clean brush. And see, I have a little smudgy there, but it's okay. I just, with a clean finger, push that right back towards the dark background. All right, friends, now rinse your brush and come back in and start to boss around these two mediums. They are going, they kind of resist each other. When you apply more pressure, they're going to blend together, but if you only stroke up or down once in an area, you're gonna get a mixture, so a gray, but you're still gonna see some really obvious and lovely texture. So just don't overwork with a lot of brush strokes and that texture will remain. I'm already moving on from that area. You might be thinking, gosh, that looks unfinished, but trust me, don't overwork the area, each area to completion. You can always come back and judge as needed. Keep moving on, friends. Adding clean water to the page. Now, I still have some of a mixture of that Bleed Proof White and the ink on my brush, and I'm kind of going with it. You can also pull in a little extra pigment from a section that you worked on previously, and that's gonna keep you maintaining control, because if you're constantly just adding more ink and more Bleed Proof White, you're gonna end up with puddles on your page, and you're gonna feel completely lost and overwhelmed. Going ahead, dropping in that ink, rinsing my brush and adding some of that bleed proof white. And honestly, friends, you don't know what's gonna happen, especially with this type of background. You've got two mediums that, you know, play nicely together, but they're resisting each other a little bit. So each section where you apply this background technique, you're gonna be in store for a lot of surprises. So just prepare yourself for that. But honestly, I find it fascinating. Remember friends, with this style of background, you can take these opportunities to actually kind of encroach on the areas that you painted originally. So for me, that's the flowers, the petals, the buds, the leaves. If you don't like the shape of one or any of those elements, you can go ahead and edit the shape by adding darkness from the black ink around those shapes and really start to carve out more of an edited look for this frame. I'm going all in here with texture. I am leaving a ton of texture on the page and in this background. You may feel like you want it to be more blended, so my recommendation for you would be this. Don't necessarily add water to your background white areas first. Go in with a little ink and then quickly go in with some bleed proof white and then go back in with a damp brush and blend it all together in a much more controlled way. Heading into background number three, friends, and I'm keeping this one light as well to maintain that center frame as the focal point. I'm using a clean-ish brush with clean-ish water to add to the white areas left over in the background here. And then I'm gonna load up my liner brush. Use whatever brush you like, but basically all we're doing is adding really soft little sketchy moments dots, dabs, dashes, and I don't have a lot of that black ink on my brush at all. You can see it's a very, very soft gray. And I'm gonna just start doodling into the background. And where things get a little too dark, you can go ahead, add a little clean water over top, wash it out, blend it out, diffuse it. So basically it's a wet on wet, but with a fine detail brush, which is a combination you don't see a lot. Usually those detail brushes come out when everything's dry and you want crisp, clean, delicate, detail lines but here i want the delicateness and i want smaller lines but i want them to be diffused and soft i'll be honest as i'm working on this i'm not sure how i feel about it but something really important to remember here as the water on the page dries as the ink continues to diffuse into the wet pages surface you will continue to see the impact of your brush strokes change most likely those brush strokes are gonna get softer and softer and lighter and more diffuse 
as the paint dries on the paper. So keep that in mind. All right, head into comments, friends, and let me know which of these backgrounds is your favorite. I know I'm not done with the last one here, but I think you probably have a really good idea of which one you're leaning towards. I know for me, it's the first one, the pencil, definitely my favorite. And it's time for you also to hit the boop button. Yep, that's the like button. Sorry, that was really bad. But friends, it really helps out my channel. And every like that I see just makes me so happy and so grateful for this community. Wrapping up here in the bottom left corner and up towards the top left corner, and I'm using a little bit more ink on my brush. On purpose, I want this area to still be kind of washy and diffused, but I want the black ink to show up a little bit more. I just think it adds a little something interesting and really helps actually carry the eye from that middle frame into the rightmost frame. So loving that. And we're finally here, the big reveal, the satisfying tape removal. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous. I love this. And yes, friends, don't worry. I am going to erase those pencil lines. Yep, I am. This is a great point in a painting like this to just really step back and look. You might think you're done, right? You might think this is good. I took the tape off, all said and done. But I myself am noticing at this point, I feel like I want to add a little something, something, especially in the middle there, just to make that middle frame really pop. So I guess my point is don't just think you're done or you have to be done because you remove the tape or because you thought you were done and you put it to the side. You can not be done. You can come back and undo things a little bit and rework a little bit. So let's get into it. I'm heading back in here with my liner brush and that black India ink. Friends, just so you are aware, all of the supplies are listed below if you're interested. Making sure there's not too much of the ink on my brush, a little bit goes a long way here. And I'm adding some linear detail to that center blue flower in that dark black. I just feel like contrast here makes sense. And into the leaves as well. If you're curious about how to create these thin, wispy, delicate lines, I do have a liner brush drill video I'm gonna link below. All right, that did it. That really made the focal point of this triptych exercise whatever you want to call it, really pop. And I'm excited. All right, you are so ready to take this background mojo into a larger painting. And friends, this one is the one to watch next. Until next time, I wish you lots of happy background painting.